Well, hello, y'all. It's Michelle, and I'm here on my free to fly journey. And tonight we are talking about how to be able to use your sinking funds without feeling the guilt, the pain of taking it out, why we feel it, and maybe a new method to try to where you feel okay with it. Now, when we created our sinking funds, we started out as a new budgeter and we had high hopes and these things were like holidays and birthdays and maintenance self-care and lecture life and then over here we got of course the reno to handicap accessible my home emergency auto catastrophic uh, catastrophic events and when i started these i had nothing now but high hopes high hopes and every week i'd stuff a little more if i got a stimulus check or i got a bonus or tax return i'd stuff a lot more and they built and they gave me a sense of security right and so what i've noticed is when let's go to auto black beauty needs some tires not bad yet but it's getting there and i know that but i'm putting it off why because it's going to be for some reason, painful for me to take the money out of auto and get her tires. But that is the whole reason. That is the purpose of this envelope, isn't it? Isn't it? So ever since I did my boot camp, anytime I feel uncomfortable with money or I have feelings that I think are not what I should feel about money, I like to examine them. I'm no longer running from my feelings. So I started thinking, why is it painful for me? Almost physically painful. <laughs> Get that pit in my stomach. I start clenching up. Why do I not want to spend money out of these envelopes? And I mean, I know that I have always said, you know, it's never about the money. There's always a psychological or a emotional reason behind why we do and behind behind the why most of us were in trouble with money to begin with so i started thinking all right michelle <laughs> why don't you like to take the money out and i came up with a couple of good reasons one it's a security thing if you grew up without money if you've ever had to buy tires and you didn't have any money and that meant another charge on your credit card or personal loan or maybe one of the payday loans. You know what I'm talking about. Also, there's a poverty mindset that I'm still dealing with and I hope that one day I conquer that, but the same thing that makes me keep the special pair of shoes that's beautiful and I won't wear them. <laughs> because I'm waiting for a special occasion, but every day should be a celebration. We don't know how long we're here. I should be wearing those shoes. And when I, those shoes are gone, then I buy another pair of special shoes. I'm worth it, right? Am I? Do I think that to myself? Sometimes I wonder because of the poverty mindset. So I am, instead of now saving I'm starting to get a little worried that I might be hoarding my sinking funds <laughs> and not allowing myself to spend them for what I designated them for. Or if I do spend them, I feel bad about it and I shouldn't. So I wanted to think of a way, a new method for me. And if you have the same problem, maybe you'd like to try it too, to where I'm giving my permission I'm telling myself that's what these are for. Stop being a <laughs> dingleberry and use them. So what I decided to do is to break my budget into two sections, okay? Are you ready? Because this is a new concept and I'm gonna see if it works. I think it will because I already feel lighter about taking money out. Okay, so I am creating two categories, okay? A building, this is where I'm building my security. I'm building it up. 
okay? Very last resort. And then this is, I'm using, I'm using this. Now I'm gonna give you a great example. Back in the 80s, my dad worked for a global company. Back then, in the 70s and 80s, you made a career. You went to a company, they treated you right, they gave you benefits, and you stayed there the rest of your life, working for them in a symbiotic relationship of give and take, and then you would retire from that company. They had a thing called PTO, paid time off, which we still have. But back then it built, built up. At the end of the year, you'd still build it. You could build it for years. If you were the type of person that never took a vacation because you were so dedicated, you could have months of PTO. In fact, many people retired and still were technically employed by the company because they had months of PTO built up. Somewhere, late 80s into the 90s, the corporations changed. They no longer treated their employees as family members. We became tools. And so a lot of the benefits were cut back and everything was into cost cutting and cost efficiency. And PTO, as many other things changed, PTO became use it or lose it. So at the end of the year, whatever paid time off you had, if you didn't use it, it was gone. No more of those months and months built up. Now, what do you think that made employees do? <laughs> well, a lot of them still did it, but instead of months and months when they retired, they would take the whole month of December off because <laughs> we're always going to find a way, aren't we? Well, where my son works, they're now starting again, cost cutting, inflation, saying, well, you can't take them but a certain amount together, you know, they catch on. So, but still, it's use it or lose it. Now, I have decided, that's close to what I'm gonna call this method, but I'm going to call it use it or move it, okay? I have designated everything in this binder right here to be used in a one year time period. Now, I know we're not in January 1st, so I prorated it for the rest of the year but everything in this binder is meant to be used by the end of the year. I'm giving my pers self permission. I'm saying this is to be used up. If it is not used up, you don't lose it, but you move it to another category like debt, which is the unsexiest category of all, <laughs> which might make me, let's just dive in here and I'll talk about some ways that I have problems. Holidays is the one, anything for my kids, I do not seem to have a problem <laughs> with. But when it comes to myself or objects or maintenance, I struggle. So holidays, I have given myself a limit. This is all holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter. And at the end of the year, whatever I haven't used will go to death. Birthday, same thing. Whatever we don't use for the for the rest of the year and birthdays, use it, move it. Those two, I don't seem to have a problem with. This one, I had to create this category. It was no, it was not, it did not exist before today, because there are things in this house that are broken. Now they're not big things, and there's workarounds, but they're still an aggravation. But I was not about to take money out of reno and i certainly didn't view it as an emergency because we could limp by and i didn't want to rob it out of those because i got them built up so i decided i need a maintenance category leaky faucet 150 dollars to fix come out of here i need <clears throat> tires i'm gonna bump this up can come out of here maintenance things to keep things going needs to be used, oil changes, things like that. I want to, I, I went through all what I thought I would need and I made a budget for the rest of the year. I will not feel guilty when I go to maintenance. These are not meant to build up to any great sum. These are meant to go ebb and flow as I spend and add during the year. Okay, 
self-care. This is the worst. I am the absolute worst at self-care. I will just let this thing build up and build up and build up. And then when it gets so big, you know what I do? I pay on debt with it. <laughs> and how do I get by with that? Well, I can't tell you how many times this year I have used the boys <laughs> Alpine <laughs> ice shampoo that dries my hair out, Irish spring soap that dries my skin out. Why? Because I would rather do without than go and use my self-care money, which is absolutely insane. Why even have an envelope if you're not going to use it, Scroogey, hoardy Michelle? And that's what I'm talking about. I'm now giving myself permission. I figured out how much money I need to color my hair, to buy makeup, and do anything else I need, and even gave myself a little padding for self-care for the rest of the year. I am not allowed <laughs> to use the boy shampoo or soap or old makeup, which I, right now I'm using makeup that I should not be using because I have been too cheap to buy myself makeup. Why? Because I don't want to take it out of any of my envelopes. So I have swung completely from overspending to hoarding it, my poverty mindset. So at the end of the year, if I don't use this up, it goes to debt. Let me tell you, human beings, when we hear the words, you're going to lose something, one life, uh, once in a lifetime opportunity, a limited time only, man, we start to think, I got to get this. I got to use this. I can already tell myself, I can already, t I can feel it in my bones. I'm going to buy my own hair color from now on. Why? Because if not, it's going to go into debt. So why am I going to chafe my skin up <laughs> when I can have some nice quality products? Lux. Another category. It's supposed to be for towels, bedding, anything that kind of runs out that doesn't really. It's like a catch-all category, but just to make life better. I have never spent $1 out of Lux. Ever. What do I do if I need towels? I take it out of food or grocery or me or shopping or something and make it work. That is craziness. Crazy town. Why Why have Lux if I'm not going to use it? I don't know. <laughs> it's my poverty mindset, I guess. I'm hoarding Lux. For what? I don't know. I guess I don't think I deserve luxury. I think it all comes down to I prefer the security of a big amount of money versus living for today. Now, my sister is battling cancer. Tonight, she came over and showed me an area in her body that's very swollen. That's bad. It's the area where they took the sentinel lymph node out. That means that there could be some cancer coming back. It's not, you know, life, life is not guaranteed. I guarantee you, she's not over there thinking, I'm going to use this Irish spring soap and this men's shampoo. She has, she's living for today. She's living her best life now because she gets it. We're not guaranteed. I still don't get it. I'm still like hoarding and saving shoes. And, you know, wouldn't it be sad if, if I died with dry hair and dry skin and, and ugly shoes? <laughs> and that's how I'm living. And it's absolutely crazy. And I'm seeing that now. And my sister's journey is really pointing that out to me. Also, I have no problem with this. It's like, if it's for somebody else, I have absolutely no problem giving away my everyday hero, doing my giving to my causes. And I don't even like mind the dollar holla. I will spend that money. But when it gets down to specifics, I have, a, I struggle, especially if it's, for me, I really, really, really struggle. And there have been times where I don't buy myself as much Christmas presents or birthday presents or Mother's Day presents as I should because I'd rather hoard that money. What am I teaching my sons? You know, don't give a woman a present. That's what they're learning. That's not my intention, but that's what I'm teaching them. I also rob my husband of the joy of getting to buy something for me. Why? Because I'm so afraid that I'm going to go back to that period of my life when I had nothing. 
So, really, tonight's whole episode can be summed up in the word of fear. I am afraid. Now, I'm working on not being afraid. And of course, knowing you're afraid of something is the best way to conquer it. So, I think by saying these categories right here are building categories. Reno, I am building that to handicap accessible my house for my son. Emergency, I am building that. But if there is an emergency, our house burns down, our house is flooded, something happens, I need to be able to be fearless and spend this money. Auto. This one is if something major happens and I'm also saving up for a new vehicle, okay? And catastrophic, I made this one because, look at that little cat, because y'all know my husband was in a horrible accident. When you lose time off from work, you're in an accident, someone gets cancer, it's good to build this up too. So these are my building. I'm not saying I won't touch them but I'm least likely to touch them to give me some security that I still need, obviously, because of my fears. But this is my use it or move it category, which I am giving myself full permission. By the end of the year, stroke of midnight, these things will empty out, whether I've, I've used them or not. If there's money in them, they are going out and they are going to the unsexy category of debt. So, <laughs> I think I can already see a mind shift that I'm gonna go to Ulta and buy me the makeup that's right now, y'all. I am wearing makeup three shades darker than I should, <laughs> I should. because when I ordered it, they sent me the wrong one. Do you think that that you know is right? No, I should have already replaced that. But what am I thinking? I'm thinking I'm still back to when I was a teenager and we didn't have money for food or money for other things and we had to make do, but I have the money for it. I've saved the money for it. I've scrimped. I've worked overtime to feel self-care. I deserve it. When will I ever realize I deserve it? When will I ever realize I am worth it? These are questions I need to ask and address myself, you know, and if you're struggling too, maybe you need to ask yourself the same questions. And until we conquer this fear, Maybe you need to have a use it or move it category. So that's tonight's video. I know it's kind of short and sweet, but I wanted to show you I am stuffing my tax return tomorrow. And because I have new categories, I didn't want y'all to be going, huh, what, 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 what? I wanted y'all to understand the psychology <laughs> my crazy brain and why I need to do this but I need it and maybe you need it too so I hope I explained why I'm doing this what my fears are and I am hoping one day that I can take this binder and I can put all these things into this and not feel like I have to hold myself with the move it or lose. Move it. I mean, the use it or move it sentence. But I'm not there yet. And that's okay. That's what cash stuffing's about. Cash stuffing is about we had a problem, self control mainly. So we had to go to cash so we could hold it in our hands and make ourselves accountable. Well, I'm getting that down, but I kind of went the other way. Now I'm not ever wanting to let it go. <laughs> even for the things that I've designated it for. So anyways, I hope y'all have a wonderful night. Look for my video tomorrow because there might be some giveaway. I have made, I have made 1,500 y'all and I want to thank each one of y'all. Y'all have been so kind, so wonderful, so loving to me and I want to bless y'all. So I'll give some giveaway in tomorrow's video and I will see you later. Bye-bye.